just thought that I got a little selection of a new kit that's turned up pretty much in this last week. The socks I've had for, for ages, I just haven't used them yet because I've been using that pair. But the main things that I want to show off before they go and get used are these. So the CD Crossfire 3s. Now, I've always been a fan of the CD. I've um, watched my, watched, I've, I've, my dad's used them for years and I've just always admired them both road, off road and thought that they look great boots. So I've been toing and throwing about boots for so long um, that I've asked many people what they prefer. You've got like the Alpine Stars Tech 7s, you've got Tech 10s, budget would not go that far. And then you've got um, the SG12s and then you've got CDs. And a lot of people, pretty much the majority, said CD was the way forward. And so I thought I need to get a pair. So fortunately through another project, I managed to get a little bit of profit and the profit I said I was then going to spend on some new kit, which I really needed as I was wearing my dad's spare kit. And uh, it was about right. I got some boots that actually fit me. So, here, here we have them. Um, they turned up a couple of days ago. Still, still immaculate. Been wearing them around the house a little bit because one of the comments that people tend to say is that they're tight around the ankle. Probably because they have this hinge here. I probably can't do it without my foot being in it. But anyway, the hinge here. So it gives a lot of flex, but it's also quite tight on the ankle. Again, it's all just about adjusting. Uh, the buckles to suit you and the straps and I like the fact that you feel protected in them um, I know I haven't worn them yet, but Knowing that my ankle can't roll in them To me, that's that's a really really good thing But first impressions out the box is I think they are stunning. I know Well, I'm gonna be biased because I bought them but I do think they look a cracking pair of boots. Um, they they look nice and soft here. I like the two-tone. They look like they've got a lot of protective pads. It looks quite straight so you can grip the bike. Got your ventilation here, a bit here, and a bit on your ankle. Uh, I know some people will say that could be a disadvantage, depending on what riding you're doing, if you're going through water. But if I know I'm going through water, I wear waterproof socks and the boots will dry out. It's not a major factor to me. Um, at the moment, I wear trousers that come over anyway, so that will help prevent anything. And there's no floods around me that I'll be riding through. So that is, yeah, they, they, they suit me down to a T. Tongue, uh, the back gusset, it's it's all made of this closed cell uh, material. This then stops uh, sweat and water absorption, um, which which should help keep you keep you dry and comfortable. We've got these geometric designs here uh, with quite a. It's obviously tough, but this aids grip. So on this this material here is quite smooth, but this bit will help you know. Help you grip on the gear levers, the brakes, you know. Obviously the brakes are on there, I'm just chatting nonsense, but this, this they've got both of them. Both of them. Oh, if I can talk. You have them both on uh, both boots. So it's extra protection, extra grip, stop you from sliding. Something also that the CD has created is this hyperextension block. So when you're in like the heat of the moment and your ankle takes uh, quite, quite a shot, quite an impact, this is where the flex is on the boot. Allows for extra movement so that your ankle doesn't take that pressure and all the pressure is within the boot kind of thing, which is why they have the hinge 
new newish thing on these boots. Um, you've also got this reinforced heel here, the reinforced hyperextension blocks here, the toughened materials here, and you, this is a rubberized grip here and here. I think that's rubber, yeah, there and there, which will help you grip to the frame of the bike, the tank, and hopefully keep you on the bike a little bit longer. So with CD, you can get the Crossfire 2s, 3s, um, the 3s are the latest version, the like evolution of the 2s, I would say. And you can get them in a SRS version. That stands for the sole replacement system. So on the soles of your boots, you have this panel here, as you can see with the four screws. That means that you can replace this panel once you've worn it out, should you need to. You can also replace it with an enduro sole, which has more grip. This is currently the motocross sole, but most people say that you can do a lot of things with this sole because you you know you've still got grip here here um you might as well use it whilst you've got it on the boot but if you've got very aggressive pegs everyone knows they eat into the soles of your boots so instead of it eating into the soles of your boots and you need a new pair of boots this has been developed so that you can just replace the section that wears the most um which i thought was a very cool design and i know a few people have used it um, David Knight has used a pair of Crossfire 2s and he's just completed the Dakar in them. Uh, There's crazy amount of kilometres, like 14 days riding. And you can see where his pegs have been, but they're not completely destroyed over maybe, what was it, 8,000 kilometres, something like that. The, he said, you know, clean them off, good to go. Uh, all the straps and the buckles you can replace. Some people like to change colours of them. Uh, it's all standard tools, so you can pretty much customise them. And the wearing parts, you can replace, which means you'll get so much more life out of these boots. And you know, it's pretty obvious, you just gotta look after them a bit. And they will look after you. So down by the first buckle, you have this little raised section. They call it a spoiler. This helps to deflect mud, stones, earth away from your first buckle so that the buckle doesn't retrieve, the, retrieve receive the trauma uh, causing you to break the buckle. Which, you know, if you're going around a corner, it just it's just very sort of streamlined. And I think that's quite a cool little bit there. Helps push it off up over and keeps it lasting longer. As I said earlier, this material here is actually also treated with Teflon. That means that if the material is not holding on to the water, whether it be water or sweat, the boot will therefore dry quicker and it won't go so mouldy. So if they're sat there for you and not riding for a couple of weeks, you don't have to worry about the inner of your boot going mouldy because it, you know it, it won't be holding that water in the first place. I really like the elasticated back here. You know, pretty much all of this molds uh, to the user's leg and s you haven't got any tough rubber or plastic digging in the back of your leg. You've got a lot of plastic protection here and here, which they say helps protect against exhaust heat, protect the leather on the boot from the bike. And it's just all round a little bit extra protection for the rider. As you can see on the boot, it's completely constructed with screws. So there are no stitches holding it together. This therefore means it is all replaceable. You can get these sections and if they break, you can fix them. There's so much to this boot that is replaceable. The buckles held on by one screw quick easy to change if you snap one on a race day or out riding you, you know i don't i don't know how much it costs but you can keep a pack of these and you replace them it's not a major issue with this boot if you break one the heel is shaped in such a way 
that it pre prevents the ankle from rolling. If you were to roll in any way, it helps support and stabilize the ankle, which gives the rider the reassurance that they are protected, they're held in the boot, and it's, it's, it's tough. It's like PU reinforced or whatever they call it. It is solid, you're, you're not getting in there, and ankle rolls, you, you just really don't want them. That's where so many injuries come from. You've also got this inner protection on here. Again, just protects the foot from anything that may be hitting it, the bike, all sorts. As mentioned earlier, that's the SRS sole. These two are fixed with their new dovetail uh, design, I, I suppose you would call it. Um, this is pretty damn tough. That is like a rubberized bit. This will help with your grip as well, so it can be used in duro, motocross. Um, both boots have the insert here. Again, protection should you slip uh, on the pegs, on your kickstart. Again, you will be protected. So I just thought I would throw some information, if I could remember it correctly, uh, about these boots before I go and use them, get them muddy and don't want them in the living room anymore but I'm really really looking forward to trying these out after hearing such good things about them I've never owned a pair before I'm really thrilled to own a pair now and I'm really looking forward to getting out there trying them on and wearing them on the bike and seeing how comfy they feel and just using them put some hours in them and go from there so at a later date, I will be able to tell you what I think of them. So for now, they've just been worn around the house a couple of times. I'll put them on a bit later on. But otherwise, they are sitting over here looking pretty. But I think they look very good. Very good. So another new piece for me is this Fox Titan body armour. It comes with the zip down the middle, so you don't have one fixed chest plate. It's obviously in the two sections, which personally I prefer. It's a little bit more comfortable, whether that's because I'm a female or not. I just feel it's got a bit more flex on it when you're wearing it. So I've been wearing an old one of Dad's. It's not a Fox, but it's another brand, and that is split down the middle. I tried his Daneasy armor on, and it, that has one fixed solid plate and it initially didn't feel as comfortable it felt like it rode up but again that's down to the users uh, the individual people's preferences basically but my first impressions of it is that it looks pretty damn solid you've got your shoulder protection there the arm protection you've got your elbow and forearm which is absolutely solid uh, also uh, you've got the air vents under your arms which should help keep you cool it's a really nice thin stretchy material so that will make it more comfortable to wear it's not a hot material it's probably gonna dry quite quick as well so when you're really working hard you're not gonna sit there soaking wet basically on the back, you've got this nice back plate. This is actually removable, as you can see by the zips here and the Velcro straps. So some people might prefer to wear a solo one, uh, not wear one at all. They might have um, an air jacket protector instead, but I've always ridden with them and I wanted it on here, but it's a nice feature that you can remove it if you want to. Another thing I really like about this is you have the waistband, kidney belt, whatever you want to call it. There's becoming fewer body armour now that, that come equipped with this. But to me, I like it. It straps you in, it holds you down. Uh, it stops it all from rising a little bit more as well. And I just feel fully secure. Holds my gut in, basically. But, nope so far again not ridden it it's been sat here looking pretty and clean but i've heard good things about it 
C certified protection and it actually fits me without rising and moving all over the place so really looking forward to getting out wearing this um, I heard the sizing is quite different so I ended up going for a large but it, if it fits it fits snug um, and being highly ventilated you don't really notice it as a heavy thing to wear so yeah it's, it, it can be worn on your hot days it's not restrictive and it, it's all just soft everywhere it's comfortable and that to me is uh, is a big factor when buying body armor so something else i've been uh, doing quite a bit of research into is goggles it's taken me a long time to get to this uh result but i've decided to go with a scott pair of goggles the uh, scott prospect goggles to be precise and i have gone in this colorway i do like the pink i like the retro and i like bright colors so for me this was a perfect perfect pair of goggles to go for i've never owned scott before again my dad has owned them in the past but he currently wears oakley air brakes again you know, you could say they're similar to look at from afar, and I'm sure many goggles these days are much the same. So, me coming back into the off-road scene, I really don't know the differences between them, but I had to pick a pair and I've got to start somewhere, and this is where I've started. So, these goggles give the rider a maximum field of vision due to the fact that they're slightly higher. So you've got this extra bit up here. Some goggles, they have an extra vents down here which reduces how much you can see. I put them on, I couldn't believe how how big. They didn't feel big on, but you can see so much. You don't really know you've got the goggles on there. They go back nicely round to the sides. Uh, you can see quite low down. And I've got an old pair of goggles that I've been wearing and they're tiny in comparison. So hopefully this will allow me to see a lot more and not really notice I've got them on. It has uh, turned up, it's got a pink tinted lens. Uh, I will be changing that, but it does come with a clear lens as well. So I'm gonna be putting the clear lens on for now. I want maximum vision. I'm riding in and out of trees at the moment. And so I don't want anything that's gonna make it slightly dark and I might not be able to see that, that branch sticking out. So according to the descriptions, uh, the Scott have a, an innovative Scott lens lock system. So no matter what's hitting them, the lens stays in place. It's not like you knock it and the lens falls out. So they're, they're said to be pretty tough. Um, I'm not planning on trying it anytime soon, but if it does happen, I'll be able to tell you how it goes. As with a lot of goggles, it comes with this is an extra wide strap. It's got the two silicon strips here to help it hold onto your helmet. Uh, it's also got articulated outriggers. These then help the, the goggles to fit into your helmet, no matter what helmet brand you're wearing. Uh, it just gives them a little bit more flex that if you've got to go out here, you know, if they're wider, the helmets are wider here, these can just move and you can still wear this pair of goggles so you don't have to be restricted that you've got one brand of helmet you've got to go with their goggles this system makes you able to use them with with any helmet and that's a big bonus because i see some helmets look like you have to have their goggles and that makes it quite well, it narrows down your choice and your options basically the lenses are treated with a no fog uh anti-fog treatment so they won't fog up or have condensation on them uh that that is a big thing for me i don't like condensation i don't like it when you're working hard that they steam up so again that's really going to be put to the test uh, to, to see how well and to see if it works uh, i'm hoping it does because that was one of the main features of why i bought these along with the field you know the vision so i will be trying these lenses out they do have vents you know nicely up here uh, I don't quite know where else the other ones are. Yeah, of course, you've got them down the bottom here and here. It also comes in the box with a nose guard. So 
you can add that on if you need to. This sits quite low in my helmet, so the helmet protects my nose. Uh, I might add it at a later date, but it's, it's not required uh, right now. The Scott goggles have three layers of uh, material and foam. The first layer is a closed cell layer. This helps to absorb the sweat away, uh, keeping you dry and more comfortable. The first layer draws sweat away and protects the other layers. The second layer also uh, absorbs the sweat. You've then got this soft layer here, making it more comfortable on the user's face. Uh, having all these different layers that work with keeping you dry and comfortable, I, I really look forward to trying them out. It's really soft on your nose also and the shape just helps fit over your nose uh, with no pinching there's no it's no plastic in there it's going to rub on it it's just a really comfy goggle so this lens is a motocross lens or any lens but that is it's not scott's own enduro lens the enduro lens has extra vents at the top here allowing a little bit more airflow through um i'm going to try them as is for the moment hoping that these vents and a newer model and the anti-fog treatment will be enough for me i'm sure i'm going to get really hot anyway so i will put it to the test um and be able to see how well they cope but as a first impression i think they're a really good looking pair of goggles uh they come with the nose guard a clear lens and a soft goggle pouch to store them in so I'm going to get the lens changed over and wear the clear lens uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future and see how well we get on with them. But yeah, there's another purchase I was really excited about and looking forward to trying. Last but not least, uh, Troy Lee socks. I haven't used this pair, they've been sat on the shelf uh, where I store my kit for a while because I've been just mostly using these ones and my other Alpine Star socks. I like to have slightly thicker socks at the moment it's winter it's cold also if you get a little bit wet it keeps your feet dry you have the ribbed band here and here which helps to keep the sock in place uh, no matter what you're doing your sock it, it won't fall down because it grips onto your leg here and here you've got the heel i say it, it's a sock at the end of the day but it's a nice thick one it made wearing the boots in a little bit comfier um, just because you've got a little bit extra protection uh, my other socks are thinner I wear them on the Honda a lot uh, just super comfy I don't mind being them in them all day and they keep your feet dry which to me is a great thing so yeah there you go you got your arch support anti uh, microbial uh, if you however you say it treatment uh, and the mo moisture wicking treatment as well which is why I say they keep your feet drier so this is my kit at the moment I've got other bits but that's old I'm going to wear it try it out see how we get on and I will report back at a later date so thanks for joining me in my living room on the carpet <clears throat> I'm gonna go and put this all away and see when we can get out on the bike next so until then have a good one